بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله This session's surah is going to be Az-Zalzala The earth shaken Az-Zalzala is uh, a surah that also has a difference of opinion amongst the scholars whether it is a Meccan or a Medinan uh, surah. But from certain signs, we can detect that the opinion of those who uh, uh, ruled it to be a Meccan is uh, the predominant opinion. Uh, number one, the size of the verses. If you recollect when we spoke about in the introductory uh, classes of tafsir, we said there are certain signs or distinct features about the Meccan and the Medinan uh, surahs. One of the distinct features of the Meccan surahs is that the verses are very short. Number two sign is that it spoke about the Day of Judgment. Right? So these two things are signs indicating that this is a Meccan surah because the theme of the surah is all about what happens after death and after resurrection. Uh, the name of the surah is Az Zalzala. It was uh, sent down after Surah Al Nisa and before Surah Al Hadid, and there is no particular reason for revelation regarding this surah. إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها الزلزال an earthquake when an earthquake takes place here in this life it's a, it's a terrifying event it it has an impact on a very deep impact on one's heart it's very scary right yes it demolishes and it changes the face of earth right but it does have a direct impact on one's heart. However, for those who have ever experienced an earthquake, nothing of whatever you have experienced or have seen on video clips or documentaries or what have you, none, none of that is anything close to what will take place on uh, the, dear, the, the hereafter. The, 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 uh, the extent of fear and horror people will experience on the Day of Judgment is by no means parallel to anything that anybody had ever experienced. It's a very violent earthquake that will take place on the Day of Judgment. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla in the Quran shakes the hearts of those who are heedless about that day. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا when the earth is shaken with its final earthquake, it's a very violent one that doesn't demolish and make everything collapse physically, rather inside the heart as well. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal describes in more details another, another part of the Quran in Surah Al Hajj in the First verse or couple of verses, Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum, inna zalzalata al-sa'ati shay'un azim, yawma tarawnaha, tazhalu kullu murdi'atin amma arba'at, wa tada'u kullu dhati hamlin hamlaha, wa tara al-nasa sukara wa ma hum bi sukara, wa lakinna athab Allahi shadeed. O people, fear your Lord for the shaken that will take place in the hour or on the day of judgment is indeed something that is grave and serious. When you see it as a result of that, as a, as a result of that earthquake, what happens? Look at the following. On that day, you see it, you see that every nursing mother will be distracted from its suckling infant. And every pregnant woman 
will abort her pregnancy and you will see people appearing to be as if they are drunk but they're not drunk so what's the matter why do they act why do they walk like drunk people what is the matter the punishment of Allah is severe you know I was when I was preparing for this class I came across uh, a piece of information from the US National Library of Medicine National Institute of Health they stated that earthquakes expedite the, pro uh, the, uh, the process of delivery for pregnant women which conforms with the, the saying of Allah again its earthquake is something that people have never experienced the like of which in this life وأخرجت, go back to the zalzala and the earth discharges its burdens Shaykh al-Uthaymeen rahmatullah alayhi said athqalaha akhrajat al-ardu athqalaha the burdens he refer to the dead bodies in their graves now on that day the earth will will, will shake and everything that's inside that earth will be spit out some scholars said that include the treasures and the gold and what have you but the theme of the surah uh, makes the saying of Sheikh al Uthaymeen closer to the, uh, to the correct meaning. Now, this happens after the first blow because you know that there are two blows that will take place. The first blow takes place, everything that exists will be put to death, including the angel of death. And then, after that, the second blow takes place and people come out of their graves. For what? For reckoning and account. وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا And man says, in terror and astonishment, what is wrong with it? Subhanallah, the event will be so severe and terrifying that a person will be talking to himself. What's going on? What's wrong with this earth? What's happening? Why is it shaking so hard? A person... will be in a state of shock. You know, when, when you suddenly get out of this grave and see everything scattered around you, everything is moving, everything is shaken, and the signs of the hour, that tears your heart apart. Because it's an introduction to what's, com what's coming after it, and you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what your destiny is. That day it will report its news. It will inform us. It will tell the news. And this is, this verse, is the answer to Malaha. What's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong is that it's going to be informing what took place on its face, on its surface. The Prophet وسلم, and this conforms with this ayah that the earth will testify, will inform about what happens, not only the earth. He said, This is reported by Al-Bukhari. When the Mu'addin calls the Adhan, 
everything that hears his voice, trees, clay, rocks, stones, everything will testify for him on the day of judgment. So the testimony of the earth is part of the testimonies. You know, on the day of judgment, different things will speak out. Different things will speak out. And the reason Allah Azza wa Jal makes different things speak out, so no one would have an excuse. So Allah Azza wa Jal establishes justice. So the deniers will have no excuse because on the day of judgment, the disbelievers will deny that they have ever d disbelieved. Why? Perhaps they can rescue themselves. But that day, اليَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَتُكَلِّمُنُ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ On that day, we will seal their mouths. And what will testify? Their hands and their legs. What else? وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَ شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا قَالُوا أَنْطَقَنَا اللَّهِ They will say to their skin, what made you testify against us? They, they will say, the skin will say, Allah made us speak, speak out. He who made everything speak out. So it's not only the earth that will testify for or against us. Our limbs, our skin. And that's why the scholars recommended that a person tries to perform acts of righteousness on different spots so he will increase the spots that will testify for him on the day of judgment. Now, the places that you're sitting at now will testify for you on the day of judgment that you came to a study circle which is a righteous deed. بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَالَهَا because your Lord has commanded or allowed it to inform or testify. So, in here Allah Azza wa is saying that the reason for what's happening, the reason for the testimony, the reason for the shaken is that Allah Azza wa gave the command for this to happen. And when Allah gives a command, everything and everyone abides and adheres. Just like Allah says, وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ And it has responded to its Lord, adhered to His command, and has, was obliged to do so. يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَانَهُمْ On that day, the people will emerge separately into categories to be shown the result of their deeds. So, in the midst of this surprise, terrifying surprise of the shaking and the earth talking and, and the emergence of everything around the person, a person can hardly catch his breath and continues to ask, Malaha, Malaha, what's wrong with it? People will start coming out, as Allah described, Ka'annahum jaradum muntashir. As if they were locusts spreading. Have you ever seen locusts spread in the season? It's astonishing the amount and the speed they spread. Allah says, describing the way they will come out, they will emerge out of the grave. يَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ الْأَرْضُ عَنْهُمْ سِرَاعًا On the day the earth breaks away from them and they emerge rapidly. You know this fast movement in itself, when, you're, when you happen to be in a gathering and people suddenly start like running away and running around like someone spinning around himself, not knowing what's happening. This in itself is, is scary for the person because he doesn't know what's happening. And this is all 
to prepare us in this life. To tell us that this is going to take place, it's going to be scary, be ready. Be amongst those whose hearts will be assured, will feel safe as a result of what they did in this life. Now, committing a, a sin is, is bad. But being called, even in this life, being called in public to be informed that you did this and that, it's so embarrassing. It is so disgraceful. Now, if this is done in a, in a courthouse, in front of a judge, in a court in front of a judge, a person will feel ashamed. Now imagine, you will be in front of people from the time of Adam alayhi salatu salam until the day of judgment. And you will be called and everybody will be seeing and hearing this take place. What state would a person be in at that moment? Nasallah al And not only that, you will be standing in front of who? You'll be standing in front of Allah, who will hold you to account, who has severe punishment, who has painful punishment. So it's not only the disgrace in front of people, but the disgrace in front of Allah add to that the fear of the consequence of the evil deeds. Allah Azza wa Jal will, as in the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, uh, will talk to the believer and inform him of his sins. Do you remember such and such sin? The slave will say, yes. And then he will again, again confirm, yes, I do. And then will Allah will ask him, do you remember this sin? And then sins will be enumerated and he will confirm and confess. Allah will then tell the believer, Nas'Allah min fadli. I have concealed it in the worldly life. People didn't know about it. And I forgive it for you today. But as for the kafir, he will be called in front of people and he will be said, it will be said to him, These are the ones who lied against their Lord unquestionably. The curse of Allah is upon the wrongdoers. People will see, as Sheikh Al Utaymin said, they will see everything, regardless of how insignificant they thought that thing was. You know, sometimes I hear some brothers say something not befitting for a believer to say. So I remind my say, brother, you know, it's not befitting for you as a believer to say. The, the response will be, oh, Sheikh, this is something, you know, minor. This is insignificant. Well, that insignificant thing you will see on the Day of Judgment. Allah says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى What is a dharra? He who does the weight of a dharra, of good, he will see it. And then the following verse, evil, he will see it. What is a dharra? A dharra, nowadays we call it an atom. But at that time, there is no such a thing. So they said, it's that dust particle. You know when, when you have the sun ray coming into a room, you see these dust particles floating around in the air. You see how insignificant that is in weight? Well, that insignificant weight of deeds is recorded. 
and will be, we will be held accountable for it. So when you say, oh, come on, you know, loosen up. This is insignificant. Remember this dust particle. And you'll see whether or not it's worth being careful about. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, as in the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيء. Don't undermine anything of righteous deeds or goodness. Anything, because you don't know which one of these things that you deem to be insignificant good deed, insignificant good deed, which one of these will be the one that will make your scale of good deeds uh, overweigh the bad deeds? After all, we'll be, we'll be held accountable for these dust particles. And on the other hand, regarding evil, he وسلم, said, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by an Albani, he said, Beware of sins that you feel very insignificant. Haqira is something that's very insignificant. People don't even pay attention, let alone think about it, they don't even pay attention. To it. Beware of these. Because they will collect and gather and then destroy the slave. Collectively, their effect will be destruction to the slave. Dharra. Remember the Dharra. Al Hassan al Basri, and with this we will conclude the surah. He said, those people who will be having the easiest account on the day of judgment are those who hold themselves to account in this worldly life. So this is the key. To hold yourself to account in this worldly life. When you're about to do something, think. Don't think of its size. Think of its impact on the day of judgment. Think of the one who told you not to do, and that's why the scholars say, don't look at the size of the sin. Look at the magnificence of the one who told you not to sin. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, those who hold themselves to account in this dunya and question their own intentions and deeds before they did something and after they did it. If it's something that will be for them, they will continue. If it's not, they would refrain. He said, the matter will be severe and heavy on the day of judgment for those who took the risk in this life. Ah, come on, it's minor. Ah, come on, it's insignificant, right? Those are taking a gamble. They're risking their consequence or their fate. And then they will come on the Day of Judgment and find that Allah Azza wa Jal has recorded everything as minor as a dust particle. And then they would say, as Allah says in the Quran, وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابُ فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحْدًا And the record of deeds will be placed open and you will see the criminals fearful of that within it and they will say Oh, woo to us what is this book that leaves nothing small or great, insignificant or great, except that it has enumerated it. And they will find what they did present before them. And Allah does not do injustice to anyone. This surah is calling upon us to be very careful of what we say, and what we do, and what we intend. And think of the scale of that day of... It's an actual scale. 
and these will be placed on it. So you see what you want to place on that scale and the way you do that is by your deeds, actions, words and intentions. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to purify, to purify our hearts. Allahumma ameen. Wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallahumma hamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayka.